I have a question. Um, <clears throat> as far as I can see, you leave the Rome as a factor completely out of your analysis. You're just dealing with the settlements among each other. And, yes. and um, Rome is putting in the process of organization external factors, impacts into that system, so to say. Mm, yes, but... And it, it's changing the, 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 the communication and the networks between the settlements, but it's also bringing new aspects into that world. That's why it's Romanized. So it's... Yes. Uh, have, do you have any idea how to grasp these factors, or is there any possibility? So the presence of uh, Roma, for example, inside the settlement, or of... Uh, yes, that's something very... I uh, thank you for my question, naturally. That's something, something very interesting. Um, that's Roman people living with the Etruscans. Uh, they are from the epigraphic source, and not so much, but it's a very huge number of people com coming from all other places, in the, from the Mediterranean, for example. And uh, the Roman culture, or the Latin language, can be not just something bad that is destroying the trust language, but it can be a choice to use a language that's able to permit to allow to communicate with new people are living in uh, uh, this uh, settlement. Um, the uh, great question is um, this circulation of people, for example, no, of idea, the presence of uh, Latin and Roman people in the Tuscan cities, uh, it, it was very strong in the Hellenistic time too. But in the Hellenistic time, the Etruscan identity is still there. There's an interaction between new people are coming and people are still there and everyone has its, its own culture. So we have, for example, a uh, culture of stranger people in Etruria, but that's yet in the 7th, 6th century in the coastal area, for example. But uh, that, uh, in this case, uh, the Etruscan continue to use their tradition and their language, but after the, say, the first half of the first century BC, they choose to identify themselves as Roman. For, that's a very nice example. That's a man, he's a, a, he's craft, he's an artist of pottery, he's production, I don't know, he's a owner of a workshop, of pottery workshop uh, uh, near uh, Florence. And Florence it was a Tuscan city, and then a Roman colony, it's very better known as Roman colony. And this, uh, this person uh, um, is named uh, uh, Marcus Volusenna, uh, that's uh, clearly uh, Volusenna, it's an Etruscan family name, but the guy uh, stamped his pottery as Marcus Volusenna Romanus, because he wants to indicate himself as Roman, so that's a cultural choice to be inside this global system, but not as a pluralistic identity, as in the past, in the Hellenistic time, uh, they were Tuscan, they were interacted with uh, uh, Greek artisan, and they were living together, and everyone has something to propose, but now there's an, uh, a form of uh, adaptation. We want quickly, people want quickly to enter their Etruscan uh, identity and to assume another one. So my asking myself, it's th th that's not a, a, vol a voluntary choice uh, from par by Rome, uh, to uh, the strategies uh, network, for example, maybe I can come back to a. You know, I'm sorry that I have to. Go. Okay, we can say like this. Uh, yeah, that's an example. We are in the last phase. Uh, this uh, uh, Ponte Rotto, it's a Roman farmer. It's a Roman farmer that's practically crushing the relationship between the territory of Fiesole and the territory of Volterra through this street, because here, until the uh, half of the third century, beginning of the second century, there were a uh, fortress, Etruscan fortress with Etruscan ceramic. And then in the second and first century we see there's Etruscan people living in a Roman farmer. Uh, from the middle of the first cent uh, second century we see, so uh, after the Punic Wars, uh, there are as well in the territory, especially in the uh, coastal area, uh, very many um, ground plots, they are armed directly from Roman people. And 
this is a very long process and when uh, we have uh, this uh, military of Scylla, uh, for example we have, um, I think that's a, a letter of Cicero, it's informing us about, uh, no, no, that's not a letter, that's Promilone, it's informing us about uh, his, uh, um, uh, the action of Claudio inside of the territory of, um, of Roselle. And Claudio was a veteran of Sulla. Sorry. So we are practically here. That's a veteran of Sulla, and it's uh, taking a, a house in the Isola Claudia, in a, this uh, beautiful house of a person that's not a Truscan, because uh, Cicero said uh, uh, he thought that the Truscan uh, were too bad for him. So he didn't take care of the Truscan, but it's a house of a Roman person. They're living there, and other sources inform, informed us, for example, uh, in relationship with Cusi, that the territory was very huge, were rich, uh, agricultural rich territory, but uh, there weren't enough Truscan that they can take care of this, and so there were a sort of colonization uh, from uh, Roman owners. The problem is, is this colonization really uh, had the aim to destroy this connection between it, or the unconscious aims or the direction to destroy this connection. Forgive me if you said it uh, and I just missed it. But so you have settlements as your nodes, and then two settlements are either connected or not connected. And you don't uh, consider different connection strengths, and you don't expect to have different results from this. I will. Um establish a connection, uh, just a direct connection between settlement, but clearly every, okay, I will not reach this, I just will stay here in this uh, theoretical um, uh, graphic. Uh, obviously this um, settlement can be connected uh, through a path with another settlement. Is this on your question? My question is, um, is one person going from A to B or 100 people Ah, the, the question. Um, for the moment, uh, I'm interested to the sh possibility to share information. And uh, where there's an identity in the populated place, uh, that's uh, obviously more information if uh, that's uh, more people moving. But there's still the possibility that uh, just few people can uh, spread the information inside the center. It's for this reason that I consider the settlement. And then I will decide that which size of settlement I want to assume, because it's also true that uh, a city is not the same things of a farmer of a settlement with under the inhabitant. But for the moment, on this uh, theoretical plane, I assume that the information can uh, pass even through a single person. So that's uh, the presence of the absence of this information, not the quantity. That we can do also a weighted network uh, if we have the quantity of uh, information passing there. But uh, in this case, uh, it's maybe possible with the help of uh, mathematician or algorithmics uh, to um, construct a theoretical model and then to verify that. But um, starting with the sources and with my data set, uh, I think it's really not so possible to um, to understand in a fair way what which the quantity of communication because we have a, a very great lack in the sources so that will be um, in my opinion a bit uh, partial maybe to try to count the contacts uh, in the from the archaeological data but we can maybe try to construct a theoretical model model <coughs> in base of the size of the settlement and to see how much from the size of the settlement can pass this information and then to try to uh, compare this theoretical model with the, the um, quantity of uh, archaeological uh, records. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs>
They have one question about one clarification. The question is, which relational tire are you considering here? Oh, sorry, we didn't. No, 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 no. I just show you this for the uh, for the connectivity. Okay. And then uh, uh, just very fast for the mobility, because uh, yes, that's uh, not um, uh, that's an undirected uh, um, uh, one mode natural. But I'm sorry, I didn't make no. it. So the connectivity was the one based on marriages. No. The, no, the connectivity is the um, physical uh, relationship between settlement okay. and the, this, uh, the mobility. Is this one on uh, marriages? Mm -hmm. Okay. But the um, choice is related to the use of the consumer of uh, goods they are coming from another place. So I don't, I can't evaluate the trade from A to B, but the uh, choice to use something that's uh, product or that's uh, original in another place. That means it could be arrived uh, also to a place that's nothing to do with the production area. And not to do, that's something to do, that, that's a contact with the area, but uh, not the DRT. Concerning the, the creation of the data set. Um, the sources you said already, what kind of sources you use? Lots of descriptions. Yeah, so we have uh, epigraphical, archaeological, epigraphical and archaeological are practically strictly <coughs> connected. For the association, I will use the literary sources. For the interaction, economic interaction between families, the epigraphic sources. Uh, for the cultural transfer, that's a difficult question. Mm -hmm. um, I we can say that uh, when I study the connection through cultural transfer, I don't study the transfer itself, but the result. Result. So that means uh, I see what happens when it's uh, it's happened. It's happened yet. I have the result, the transmission, the cultural transmission, the cultural transfer. I don't have uh, the possibility to see this. Mm -hmm. And then, yes, other sources, yeah. not so. I don't use uh, uh, <coughs> anthropological or uh, uh, other kind of uh, scientific analysis on people, mm. born of people like this, because that's some difficulties more than maybe don't talk about it. But <coughs> I am not so persuaded that this uh, studies about the task and DNA can really indicate the, uh, the movement of people in a precise moment. Was there any already existing data, data set, database that you were able to use? Or you no, no, I'm constructing my data set. Okay. That's, uh, so I'm collecting, but uh, most data I've collected for my um, PhD because <coughs> studying the cultural transmission, I have to study uh, the uh, exchange of material goods to, to understand the relationship between material goods and uh, cultural transmission. So I guess would be also very important for other people. Uh, I, I hope, yeah, that, that yeah, was if, if, you, if, you, if you could share. Yeah, uh, I thought it, if it's possible in the future to put it in Arachne, that would be useful because people, they can have their direct uh, open access to the data and to use them in other way that I I'm looking forward in the case of. It, it sounds like a lot of work to create the data. Even before you know, starting to analyze it, start, sounds like lots of work to create the data set. Yes, that's um, the moment in which I collected my data. It's the um, moment it's more dangerous for the analysis because uh, uh, the archaeological documentation in northern Etruria <coughs> is not so homogeneous. Mm -hmm. Uh, especially because uh, some excavation uh, have been done uh, in the between the 17th century and the 19th century of our millennium. That means that uh, they are not uh, 
they, they weren't done with a scientific idea, but they, with the idea to collect things. Uh, that's also very important. I will not collect everything. I will try to choose things that they can be quickly safe. For example, the cinerary bones or some uh, uh, grave forms that we can't really move. For example, the pilaster tombs with a, a round shape uh, that it's impossible to move the tombs from a place to another. So they are not in collection, but they are in situ eventually and they have been seen in situ. Any other question? It's not. Oh, yes. Uh, what, what is the, what would you say, uh, and probably, again, probably you have said it already, but what is the main, or what the main first result of, of the analysis of your data? So what do we learn about the accruing settlements that we didn't know before? Uh, yes, yeah, something new I uh, have, yeah, but uh, the, I really in a hurry phase to col uh, collecting data. That means that I can't compare the I can't compare the network, the, the relational the networks with uh, different relational types. That means that my analysis is really incomplete. But uh, these things, for example, so the things that in the second first century we see that uh, this. Uh, uh, separation between the uh, territory of Chiusi and the territory of Volterra Fiesel, it's in my opinion very <coughs> important uh, because uh, uh, the relationship, for example, the relationship through marriages between uh, Perugia, I don't have a map here, yeah. sorry, okay. Uh, do I have to search a map? It's clear maybe for people that to see where the, the things are. Ah, yeah, maybe. yeah. In the first phase, the connection between Perugia, Chiusi, and uh, Volterra, and for the mobility of people, for example, but also for some uh, production uh, of pottery, for, uh, for example, this uh, group, uh, group uh, Clusium Volterra group, that's a greater homogeneity between this. But now, then, then in the second and first century, we see that's a great distance in the cultural manifestation between the two areas. They are both, for example, using a funerary inscription, but in a very different way. In Volterra, we have funerary inscription on urns, in Chiusi, and in, in Perugia, on urns too, as well. But in Chiusi, in the second and first century, they start to use a local grave with the inscription on the tile. We have seen before this tile with, with the inscription. And that's a, as a breakdown of this relationship that they were so strong in the 4th and 3rd century between Chiusi uh, uh, and uh, Voltaire and Fiesole and uh, okay that's also the, uh, the Cassia uh, street is passing through this settlement and I think that I wasn't able to see that without the social network analysis that was much more clear in uh, in this context. And that's also another thing that's uh, related to, uh, I'm going to the, in the wrong direction, mm -hmm. uh, very um, interesting things more. For example, this is a center of, uh, this is a bridge center of Castelnuovo Berardenga. That's a bridge between uh, Chiusi and Volterra. But it's a very misconceived center in the archaeology, as archaeological record. So we have some survey in the territory we have some graves, but it's not an important center for the archaeological records. But under the point of view of the social network analysis, its function to uh, connect the QC and uh, Volterra indicated that uh, this Casanova Berardenga can be a very important archaeological place. That for us is just a settlement, ill settlement of the Middle Ages, as every other settlement. So I think we can have some information more that's not so easy to see in the older way. And that's not so easy because of the lack of the information, but also because of the, uh, the complexity. That's another uh, skill I'd like to use, uh, the, another reason because I like to use this uh, social network analysis that's uh, possible in the first moment to reduce the information and after to aggregate and new the things and, and what, see what happens. So it's, it's the same, it's not the same. I've seen in this early phase that some 
differences. So it's some things that I can see I can see as archaeologist, but with the natural studies, maybe I can be more careful and watch better. So completely, you would now go to this connecting place and do some excavation there because you have oh. identified that uh, a high chance of finding something there. That, that would be very nice, but uh, on the practical level, a bit difficult because of the concession of the excavation, it will be interesting, but maybe we have in the last time uh, the University of Siena collected very many survey data. That they are also not completed because they are sample survey, uh, sample data, uh, data through sample and survey. And in this case, uh, I will maybe not go personally to do an excavation, but I will ask me a bit better what happens in Casanova Berardenga mm -hmm. and try to understand the material culture of this place uh, in the key of the relationship. In the history of the Etruscology, that's a tendency to study every single place and the whole connection of the place. That's a very traditional way. So I study Volterra or um, settlement San Gimignano, that's in the cultural area from Volterra, and then I say that in the burial graves there's some things coming from Chiusi or Perugia, and then I connected my place with uh, all other places because I have objects. But maybe I can start to think that the connection are not just the object, and to try to understand also places that they are not so well attested from the uh, material culture. That would be my wish. That's <laughs> Let's see what happens. And do all your seven axes support the same hypothesis of a breakdown in contact? Um, yes, I. <coughs> in the last time, really, I, I was thinking if the breakdown is not more a, su a substitution. That I will try to understand better. So, if it was a, a real uh, hint to uh, to destroy the relationship between centers, so uh, of um, I don't know Roman colonies to be between center and. Uh, to control them, because the organization of northern Etruria wasn't a military conquest. So it was a, um, from the sources, from the history, we know that it was a series of uh, alliances that were very, very short time alliances, uh, and then something happened. So to understand uh, what these things uh, is uh, really happening, but uh, I don't exclude that this um, breakdown can be as done through a substitution of spots of notes uh, with something that they are really not Etruscan, that means uh, with people that are not Etruscan and with uh, material culture, culture is not Etruscan, and with uh, institutions that are not typical of uh, Etruscan tradition. Last call for more questions. We can move to the wine. Thank you for your presentation.